Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of the uranium enrichment factory. Last week we built the heart of the structure which is the ore acid iso centrifuge setup. Today we are going to focus more on isotope separation using the silex and automatic crafting of the fuel with the separated isotopes. So if you haven't checked out past week's video, I highly recommend you do. And yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so this is where we left off last week, two shredders coming out into four lines of conveyors. So these four lines of conveyor will be our input for the silex. Now the silex will be set up in these two chunks right here. So I'm going to set the border as the gray concrete and as for the middle tiles, you can set them to basically anything that you want. But uh, make sure that you are doing this inside the chunk borders. So that's the entire region set. And now, as I told you, in the middle, you can set it to basically anything that you would like it to. So that's one part done and connecting the conveyors back again like this. And in a similar manner, I'm going to set up this other two chunks. And now for the remaining chunk in the middle where our automatic crafting tables are going to be, I'm going to set the borders as black concrete and in the middle concrete tiles. So with that done, now let's set up the silex. So come out by seven blocks. So here's four, five, six, and seven. And from this one, come out by four. And on this fourth block, come up two high. And now extend the line all the way back to the end of the chunk like this. And make sure that these are temporary blocks. So on the top, place down your first silex and uh, then leaving one block gap we are going to place down the other silex so make sure to have one block gap in middle otherwise they will break and finally it's time to place down the laser or the fel so for that leave two blocks instead of one make sure that it is two blocks otherwise it will break the silex in front of it and place the fel now the beauty of this is that the output of the first silex will be directly in line with the chunk now for the output itself place down a conveyor ejector from the center of the bottom most part and from it place down a conveyor chute going towards the front side so do this for all of the four silexes and make sure that the output is facing like this so that's four silexes done now place down some conveyor inserters on this side like this and going into the conveyor inserters are gonna be conveyor lifts. So place down four of them like this and from here we can start connecting them to the shredder lines. So once you have made sure that these lines are working, connect them to the lines that are coming out of the shredders like this. So that's total of four lines done and now this is optional but uh, yeah you can make the conveyors look good using the screwdrivers. So once again this step is kind of optional but uh, if you don't want to basically see your silex is hanging in midair, uh, you can make a structure with scaffolds and steel grids like this. Now it is kind of a painful step because placing down grids isn't the easiest step but yeah also yeah make sure to place down any blast resistant block at the very end of the silex line because uh, otherwise the laser will travel in front and it will damage you or break any blocks that are placed in the front so that's that and now it's time to place down the grids so cover the entire bottom part with grids and uh, the reason i told it's painful is because you can't really use world edit for this so this whole step has to be done by hand but the good thing is that you can walk below it and also above it so that's why placing the grid like this is awesome because uh, yeah then it won't really hamper with this area you can easily access it so once all of the grids are placed it's gonna look good it's just gonna take some time for you to do that all right so that's done and once all of this is placed it's 
gonna start looking pretty good actually so one side is done now repeat the exact same process on the other side right here and yeah i'll see you once that's done so with both sides complete it's gonna start looking something like this now we have to connect the output into a single line so we have to merge all of the outputs into a single line and for that just extend some lines from the conveyor shoots and these output lines are then gonna go into our final chunk which is gonna have the automatic rafting tables and we are gonna merge both the lines going into the front like this so that's how the output is gonna work but we are gonna talk about that later for now let's set up the chemical plants for hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid so to maintain some uniformity in this whole build i'm gonna change the flooring of this chunk right here into the coated cables and i'm gonna set them not sorry not coated cable paintable cables and then set two uh, chemical plants even a single one will work but uh, yeah they don't really consume that much power so you can have two in here place down heavy infinite water tanks and set both of them to produce hydrogen peroxide now we are going to place down some buffer tanks so this first buffer tank will hold all of our sulfuric acid and this second tank right here will hold the hydrogen peroxide so set them with the respective fluid identifiers and then we can start connecting our fluid pipes so the first fluid pipe goes in like this this is for as i said hydrogen peroxide and for the second one place down a mixer and this mixer is gonna make sulfuric acid how that's gonna work is it will take hydrogen peroxide and sulfur and it's gonna combine it into sulfuric acid so once you set the output of the mixer it's automatically gonna set its input and for the input you can have a crate with an ejector a single conveyor and an inserter in the middle and to control this whole thing you can have a comparator signal out of the inserter going back into the ejector so how this works is if i fill up this entire crate with sulfur right now and i also fill up the inserter so what's gonna happen is if there are enough items in the inserter it's gonna send a strong enough signal to the ejector and as long as the ejector is getting a signal it won't give any sulfur to the inserter and then you can have a separate sulfur line going inside the crate and by the way sulfur can be produced in infinite amounts using copper or iron the bedrock deposits so yeah that's how you can get infinite amounts of sulfur but we are not gonna cover that in this video now to actually connect all of the fluid ducts the first ore acidizers on both the sides and all of the silexes are gonna take the input for hydrogen peroxide so here i'm gonna speed through this entire part so all of the silexes are connected and uh, yeah that's the input for hydrogen peroxide for sulfuric acid we are gonna feed it to the second stage of ore acidizers and more importantly to the mining drill itself because in order to process the uranium bedrock ore the mining drill actually needs sulfuric acid so that's the connection done for sulfuric acid and also for hydrogen peroxide it's gonna look something like this and by the way in order to transfer power to the silex you don't need to convert all of the tiles into the cable form if you want to but instead you can run a single line of cable on both the sides like this and then connect the fel the laser with cable because that's the only component which requires power in the first place finally for auto crafting place down a conveyor router and uh, the conveyor router sorry and the conveyor router can then have two outputs one side can be configured for uranium 238 nuggets and the second side can be configured for uranium 235 so in front of the inserters place down the automatic crafting table and as i have set the right side to uranium 235 
set the recipe and the left side is gonna be uranium 238 now from here we have conveyor ejectors once again with conveyor belts in front and then some inserters which are gonna go into buffer crates so these crates are actually useful because you can use them to control this entire power plant or the processing plant sorry from there get some ejectors and once again going into inserters into one final automatic crafting table and set the recipe of this crafting table to uranium fuel and once you have done that our final output of uranium fuel is gonna be deposited in this crate right here so right now if i turn on the mining drill we can see the entire operation and also figure out if there are any mistakes in it so here goes our first piece of bedrock ore and uh, here you can see that the acid is actually decreasing that's because i forgot to set the tanks to buffer mode make sure you do that set the tanks to buffer mode and also inside the fel place down the crystal for ultraviolet rays because with the ultraviolet crystal it can process the uranium powder you will start getting uranium 235 and 238 which will end up in the conveyor router and from the conveyor router it will get divided left and right side and uranium 238 is going to be produced in more amounts so you can use it with a redstone transmitter the signal transmitter to yeah control the power plant and by the way to make this whole thing more efficient you can use a 1 is to 5 conveyor belt uh, basically divider if you want to call it that to have five silexes run instead of four to make it more efficient so yeah that was it for this video hope you guys found it helpful if you did like and subscribe and yeah peace out stay safe